guys, what's up? It's Joe Reddy from Reddy's Rides. I'm here with something very special because I know you guys want those cars as soon as they roll off the trucks. Brand new, this is a 2019 BMW Z4 M40i. So this is the almost carbon copy to the new Toyota Supra. Now I know a lot of you are saying, hey, didn't you already do the Z4? You're 100% right. And if you haven't seen it, I'm gonna put the link at the end of this video. I did the Z4 M30i. So that was the inline four turbocharged engine. This one though is the top dog. This has the straight six turbocharged engine, just like the Supra. And guess what? I have somebody very special to thank for the opportunity to bring this car to you. One of my old students, Joey, drove all the way from Pensacola. He's such a fan of Radies Rides and wanted this on the channel because he knows just like he feels when he's watching Radies Rides, he wants to see the latest and greatest. So let's talk a little bit about BMW history. BMW's been on the scene since 1916. Does anybody at home, yes you, know what war was going on in 1916? If you said World War I, you're 100% correct. Also, if you would have said Great War, you're also correct, because World War I was known as the Great War. But anyways, 1916, that was in the middle of World War I, because World War I went from 1914 to 1918. BMW, though, was not making fancy two-seat sports cars during World War I. They were building airplane engines. And guess what? Once the war was over, Germany, just like so many of the other European countries, needed cheap transportation. And in 1922, BMW made their first motorcycle, not car. It wasn't until 1928 that BMW produced their first car. And guess what? Since 1928, so many amazing things have come out of the factories in Germany to just change the whole car industry from all their different models to their racing heritage. And now fast forward to 2019 with this new Z4 Roadster. Now, the interesting thing is they decided to do a little bit of cooperating with another organization, Toyota. So many of you are aware Toyota and BMW worked on the Supra and the Z4 at the same time. BMW chose top-down fun. Toyota Supra decided to keep it light and, and very sporty coupe style. And that's really where we're gonna see some differences because I'll show you that there are similarities, but you'll be surprised. There's a lot of differences as well. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Z4 history. So Z4, we haven't seen a Z4 since 2016. And in reality, to talk about the Z4, you need to talk about a car called the BMW Z3. That two seat convertible came out on the scene in 1995. But that car was very different from what you see behind me because that car was a, co a competitor to the Miata. This one though is going to really turn up the wick, get a lot of horsepower to those rear wheels with that straight six turbocharged engine. Let's see, it's been three years since there's been a Z4. Let's see what kind of improvements and changes BMW has done. Right off the bat, one thing you'll notice is that the car is wider. It's actually wider, it's actually longer, and it has a wider wheelbase than the outgoing Z4. But I really wanna just show you some of the things that I love. Right off the front, you'll see a lot of eight series styling. I love the headlight design. You could see the new style in the DRLs that um, BMW is using. I also like the way it kind of angles off to the edge of the hood there. Very, very sharp, gives it a very aggressive look. And that's something also, compared to the outgoing Z4s, this thing is aggressive. Let me show you. Down here, you do have some actual functional venting. So that's a plus, no zonk there. I like the functional air curtain. And I also really think that this brushed aluminum finish really fits it very well. One of the places I'm gonna zonk is this right here, this gloss black. I wish they would've took some of the brushed aluminum and brought it here, but guess what? This is functional as well. As we go across the front, there it is. That is the newer style kidney grill because there's two different ways to tell a BMW right off the bat from the front. The kidney grill shape, which this is more like a butterfly, that's what I'm gonna call it because it's sort of like sprouting its wings. And then also that iconic BMW logo. Bavarian Motor Works, straight out of Germany. The old wives' tale is, is that that is a spinning propeller. No, that's an old wives' tale that supposedly came from the airplane side of things. This is actually just the colors of the Bavarian flag, blue and white. 
What I do like is there's that brushed aluminum. What I don't like is I don't like the color of the grill. I wish the center area was blacked out. Now you can get a totally blacked out grill, but it also blacks out the trim around the main portion of the grill. I wish that this was just a darker flat black and keep the brushed aluminum. As we come down, another zonk for me is I wish they would have went with a similar design from top to bottom here. But I understand why they did because it probably would have been a little too much. Another thing that I think is super smart that BMW does is I like the way they integrate the lower lip spoiler into the front fascia. So this is gonna help scoop air into the front of the car all the way from one side to the other. And you can see just how it flares out. I think that that's a nice touch as well to give it some personality, how it flares out on both corners. As we go up onto the hood, here's something very unique you don't see a lot, is they get very creative with the body lines on the hood. I like the way the line kind of just fades towards the windshield, but you have two raised portions, one for the driver, one for the passenger, really gives it a classy look. As we come around the corner, now, with the M40, you do get the performance package included. If you get an M30, you gotta pay extra. What that means is, right off the bat, you're gonna get these M branded wheels. Now, when we say M in BMW talk, that means motorsport. That's part of their racing heritage. So you have a 19 inch wheel, the tire is 255 width, with a very uh, short 35 series on the side, massive M calipers, finished in that classic blue color, and then you can see the rotors lurking behind the wheel. Now, I'm a little disappointed on the rotors, especially for the M40. I would like to see them cross-drilled. I would like to also see like a separate aluminum hat to help with brake cooling. But you know what? This is gonna get the business done if you're doing a track day or you're doing an autocross course, for sure. As we go down the side, one thing I forgot, I'm gonna have Lori show you. BMW, you can see these are LED headlights. They are very proud that they're LED headlights and they want to let it known. Also, when it comes to the hood, the fender is built into the hood. So you'll see when we pop this hood, it's a very large hood and the fender is actually built into it. Now, as we go into the lower portion of the fender, there's some thumbs ups and some thumbs downs. I do like the style of this. This is drop dead sexy. It's also functional. So that's the thumbs up. The thumbs down part is I don't like this gloss black. I wish they would have took that nice brushed aluminum and sprinkled it over here. I think it would just give it a higher upscale feel and just look different because you don't see a lot of brushed aluminum on the exterior of cars. As we go down the side, here's what I was telling you about. Hello, here's the brushed aluminum. Take this, put it down there, but I like it up here as well. You got a nice slim and trim LED turn signal. I think it's super smart that they decided to black out the A pillar. Makes the windshield almost disappear, almost like a speedster look. As we continue down the side, you can see the beautiful body lines that they put into the door. Remember, longer wheelbase. What does wheelbase mean? It means how many spaces, how many steps are in between the front wheel and the rear wheel. That's what wheelbase is. Shorter wheelbase is gonna make a car handle a lot different compared to a longer wheelbase. As we work our way to the back, one thing I wanna point out, just like up front, we got Pilot, Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. The great news about that tire is it gives you good grip but it also gives you some pretty good durability. Another thing, the tires in the back are wider. So what that means is it's gonna get the power down because this is a rear wheel drive car. Engine up front, power going to the back, perfect 50-50 weight distribution. How did BMW do that with it being a convertible is beyond me, but they did it and they did it well. As we come up on to that convertible top, here's a zonk. I wish they would have made a nice tonneau cover just to finish this part off. But what I do like is there's that brushed aluminum trim I was telling you about with the Z4 badging there, very classy. With the badge there, you know that they did it on purpose and I like that. As we come around to the rear, nice low and wide rear end. One area that I wanna zonk is this fake vent here. I wish they would have just brought the paint into here and got rid of this rear reflector, but I do like the LED turn singles there's that classic M badge, M40i badge. There is gonna be a real M car of this model, but this isn't it. That's gonna be coming, so stay tuned for that. But I do like how cohesive the rear end is. You can see the diffuser down here. Look at where they put the reverse light. Very smart, cleans up the whole back of this car. One thing I feel like it's lacking is just a little bit of a kick up. I like the way they flared the trunk up, but I just want a little bit more of a kick up, especially on the M40. Little kick up black spoiler, carbon fiber maybe would have been nice. Just a little bit, 
just to give it a little extra downforce and a little personality off the rear. But let's go ahead, pop the hood, and see what's gonna be powering the Z4. All right, guys, we got the massive hood pop. Just like I, I told you earlier, you can see how the fender actually is built into the hood. Very large hood, just like it's gonna be on the Supra, but there is also something that's also gonna be in the Supra. That is that inline six. So what you're looking at underneath that BMW plastic is a three liter inline six turbocharged engine producing 382 horsepower, 360 foot uh, pounds of torque, zero to 60 in about 4.1 seconds, quarter mile in about 13.7 at a top speed of 155 miles an hour. This one is weighing in with the straight six around 3,841 pounds. Now let's talk a little bit about this engine. I do like the engine cover, even though I don't like a lot of plastic, it's, a, it's an attractive engine cover. I like the way they put some color into it. They put the BMW badging and whatnot. If I'll, many of you are saying, well, this is just a Toyota Supra, here's where you're wrong. This engine produces more than the Toyota Supra. Remember, the Toyota Supra puts out 335 horsepower. If you weren't listening, get your Q-tips out, clean out those ears, this has 382 horsepower. Now, before you say, that's unfair, that's unfair, this weighs more than the Toyota Supra. So believe it or not, that zero to 60 time that I told you, zero to 60 in about 4.1 seconds, is gonna hold true to the Toyota Supra. But they're totally tuned differently, and they're gonna behave differently, which is gonna be such a unique experience, and I promise you that we'll be bringing it to you here on Rady's Rides as soon as those Supras hit the local dealerships here. But like the placement of the engine, Front engine, real wheel drive, you got the power. Speaking of the power, why don't we go ahead and fire this up and see what the Z4 sounds like. All right guys, we're inside the new Z4. M40i. If you're wondering, Joe, I really like this car. I like what you're saying. What is the price? MSRP on this one, the way that you see, is around $70,000. Why don't you come inside and I'll show you what we're, what we're working with at that price. So let's go to the door panels. Door panels are sexy looking. The problem is there's a little too much black. I wish they would have brought some of those M colors into the stitching, but I do like the lighter contrast stitching the silver on the speaker cover and the silver on the door handle. You can see that you actually have memory settings for your passenger, and then of course you're gonna have memory seat uh, settings for the driver as well. When we go from the door panel to the dash, soft material, you got that nice contrast stitching. I don't like the way they went gloss black around the AC vents. I wish they would've went with the silver, but it is what it is. As we come from the dash onto the infotainment section, two 10.2 inch screen. So you have a 10.2 inch screen here and a 10.2 inch screen in front of the driver. I like how clean everything is. I don't like all the gloss black. I feel like this may cause glare when you're driving, which we'll find out because we're going to be taking this one for a spin. But I like the addition of that silver that I was telling you about, the silver on the AC buttons. Of course, you're going to get dual climate control and all that. Another thing is look at the style of the vents. Just very nice the way they didn't just do like a, a C shape, they gave it some personality. As we come down, very slim and trim on the radio controls. Now one thing I wanna point out about all of this, this is totally different than the Toyota Supra. So if you think, hey, Joe's doing the review on the Z4, I know what the Supra's like, not exactly. The Z4 has a totally different interior. Here's a little fun fact for you. Believe it or not, there's laws in Germany that stop companies from working together and just copying everything. So that's why this is not an exact carbon copy. It's the sister car to the Super, not an exact copy. But I like how slim and trim the radio controls are. You got wireless charging, you got a 12 volt, a USB, and watch this. This is my favorite part. <gasps> we have a nice functional lid. I love the silver trim. There's the Z4 badge. You wanna open it? Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Now as we come into the center area, more gloss black, follow my old rule. If you don't want fingerprints on the gloss black, don't touch it. If you touch here, no fingerprints. So you have your BMW iDrive control. This is gonna be controlling that ZF eight speed. So only option available. You cannot get a manual in this car, which to me is a zonk. This car needs a manual transmission. 
but the ZF8 speed is pretty potent. You have your start stop button. Here's our different modes. Like I was telling you, you can go through different modes because this has the package that's gonna adapt your suspension and everything. I'm gonna have Lori focus on the screen here and just show you. So you could do your split screen, radio controls, and your navigation if you want to. You could just do straight up navigation. You could go into the car mode, which obviously is a touch screen. You see me touching it, and you could go into it. You could go into vehicle settings, status. Now watch this. I'm gonna go back to home. Lori's gonna stay there, and I'm going to go into the different, so you have sport, you have comfort, and then you have eco. Also, you have adaptive, so that's gonna predict adjustment of vehicle setting for the driving situation. It's gonna handle it for you. Very nice touch, and you could also use the rotary dial of that iDrive control. You could zoom in, you could zoom out. Look at this, we're gonna go into outer space. There's Rady's Rides in outer space right there. So pretty cool. BMW, thank you for the satellite views. And then a nice silver all the way around. Watch this. Bombs away, the bomb bay doors open. You have two cup holders in here and another USB. My only complaint is, what are you gonna do trying to drive with your cup holders here? If you wanna use the armrest and you have a cup, it's not happening. So here's your choice. You could drink up before you drive, or if you are drinking water, because you're not drinking anything else, I don't recommend that, or do I condone it, you are gonna lose some of your nice elbow space here. And this is very, it's actually pretty soft, believe it or not. No back seat. You do have a nice cubby area, though, to put some different things here, some tennis rackets if you're going to go play tennis or whatnot. Look at this. Hey, who's home? You got a pass-through. So a little gnome will come out, hand you another drink, or maybe hand you a candy bar or something like that, and then you could close it up very nicely. And then the last part of these seats, BMW does some sexy things with their seats. I love the material. I love the styling. Soft yet supportive, and there's a good amount of bolstering. Where there's not a lot of bolstering is on the bottom portion. I wish there was just a little bit more, especially if you're gonna get aggressive with this thing. But you know what? They did a great job with the seat. Why don't you come on over to the business end and I'll show you what it's like to be behind the wheel of the Z4. All right, guys, here we are behind the wheel of the Z4. You can see I am six feet tall. The seats fit me really, really well. I like the way that they hold you. Just I wish there was a little bit more on the lower portion wheel. BMW does some of the best looking and best feeling wheels. I love the thickness. You have your M badging. This is a heated steering wheel and then nice thumb controls and you have plenty of brushed aluminum. Large paddles. Remember, you could shift the eight speed automatic with the paddles down or up depending on which way you're going with the gears. It isn't a DCT, it's just a traditional eight speed automatic, but you can do manual shifting. And then check out that dash. BMW has raised the bar when it comes to the dash design. They've definitely taken some ideas from Audi and whatnot. You can show your navigation there. You see the tachometer, the speedometer, and all the other important information that you need. But why don't we go ahead and I wanna show you how the hood, uh, excuse me, how the roof works. So roof, you could get the convertible top to come up in 10 seconds. So you just pull up on this little switch. You could do this at a speed of 31 miles an hour. And there you go, it's fully locked down. Gives you a little bit of a chime. You want it to go back down, you press back down on that same button that has the convertible top. 10 seconds, are you, are you timing me right now? And voila, top, top is back down for your top down fun. Let's go ahead, before we go out for a spin, let me show you the trunk and see, can you put anything in the back of the Z4? All right guys, time to check out what kind of junk can you put in the trunk of a Z4. You just press the button here, you lift it up, there's no electric assist. Actually, pretty good amount of room here for a convertible. Now the opening is a little tight, but if you look, there is a pretty good amount of space, even with the top down. So whether the top is up or top down, it's not gonna change the amount of space. There's that little door for the gnome to get in and out, to hand you your candy bar, to hand you, hand you your Pepsi or your uh, Diet Dr. Pepper, whatever you're drinking. But very simple and lots of room to make this a usable car. Speaking of this car, let's go ahead and do what we love to do here on Ready's Rides. Let's take it for a spin. All right, guys, we're in the 2019 BMW Z4 M40i. I'm gonna do a start from a dead stop. Here we go, on throttle. Acceleration is nice and smooth. You can hear the pops every time that gearbox 
switch gears, it makes a nice pop and a bang. That power transferring to the rear wheels. Great sound, I have it in Sport Plus mode. And I'm telling you, I think that the transmission does a fantastic job of shifting the gearbox for you. Now obviously you can put this into manual mode, which I will in a few moments, but uh, for most people, they're just gonna leave this in automatic, because you know what? It shifts very, very quickly. Rolling out. This thing is like a freaking rocket, man. It really is. It's unassuming. You would think 382 horsepower in a car that, you know, is a convertible. How is it going to feel? It feels pretty damn quick, and it just gets me even more excited to drive the Supra so that I can compare the two cars. But even just driving along with the top down, you don't get a lot of wind buffeting whatsoever. I do have the side windows up. That's where I attach the GoPro, but love the layout of the dash. Very nice and large infotainment screen. And you know what? That gloss black that I was worried about actually does not cause any glare whatsoever. And you can see the infotainment screen really, really well. There's our position on planet Earth. Um, and definitely the screen, the 10 inch screen in front of you is very easy to see, very clear to read and to understand. But I just like how nice and smooth the gearbox goes through the gears. You can hear the whirl of the turbo. I'm gonna go ahead and put into manual mode here. Very nice. I, I love the pops coming from the exhaust. Very, very smooth. Even through that little kink right there, the car handles very, very well. Love the shifting. I love just shifting with the paddles. Feels really good. Here we go. In this right hand bend here, nice and balanced on throttle. Very nice and smooth. I like the way it really keeps the power down and helps you feel secure to the road. Almost like Gorilla Glue sticking you to the tarmac. This Z4 is so hot, they had to send out the fire trucks. That's how hot the performance is in this drop top. But I'm telling you, it's a blast to drive, that's for sure. The pops coming from the back sound like little shotgun shells going off. That sounds really amazing. And like I said earlier about the steering wheel, this steering wheel is dynamite. It feels so wonderful, especially the 10 and 2 grips are nice and thick, so you can always have a nice feel on the wheel. And you know what? The feedback that you get from the front end of the business feels really, really good. And I can tell that 50-50 weight distribution for sure. All right, guys, let's get it on in a little bit third gear. On the brakes, feel good. Nice balance. Little bit of slide from the rear. I like it, it feels controlled. The rear end broke loose just a tad. Enough to let you say, hey, let's have some fun. And you know what? It was able to come right back very easily. Well done with the balance of this car. It, they really have raised the bar on the Z4 for sure. Compared to the outgoing one in 2016, this is a mountain difference from the outgoing version. And just the seats are so comfortable. There's a BMW does a really got a good job with their seats to where they feel comfortable, but they're also supportive at the same time. I really like that. The turns are real easy on throttle. On the brakes. I like the way the tr weight transfers from the rear to the front of the car. Nice steady throttle. Feels well over the bumps, even in the stiffer suspension settings, over the bumps you feel so planted. I love that about this car. Because that's the thing is, how can you push a car if you don't feel confident in what the car is doing? Nice, smooth. 
on the brakes. Brakes feel great, I'm telling you. I know I was asking for cross drill rotors and whatnot, but the brakes feel great in this car. Boost comes in really low. You don't have to wait for it. And I'm telling you, very easily are you gonna break speed limit speed, that's for sure. On the brakes, I'm gonna go into this little left-hand bend here. I really like the way it holds a line. Watch this, oh, this feels good. Front end feel, very nice, smooth, on throttle. Really wonderful, I'm really digging this car. Watch this, here we go. Little right-hand bend here. Nice, look at this. Feels wonderful, wonderful. Making a U-turn. U-turns are easy peasy in this thing. Look at this. One, two, three, on throttle. On the brakes. Handles great. Left, right transition. Nice. If anybody's wondering, Joey told me to get on it, so that's what I'm doing here. On the brakes, bump into this right-hand bend. Very nice. On throttle. I'm telling you, the power delivery is so smooth, it pulls all the way through the rev range. I like the way when you go into a bend, it sets up the weight perfect on that outside corner and it holds it so nicely. They did a hell of a job. Toyota, BMW, whoever had their hands in this really did an amazing job with this car and I'm really digging it. And you know what? It's an option for somebody that wants that top-down fun with a car that's got personality. And I'm liking the feedback. You know, BMW has been uh, zonked left and right for not for losing that feedback from the front wheels. I feel really connected to this car, um, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Thank you, Joey, and uh, I know all of you are enjoying it as well. So I know you all want to thank Joey as well but uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up and i'll see you in a split second all right guys it's been one heck of a day with this bmw z4 i definitely got to give a huge shout out to joey and his wonderful wife for bringing this car down all the way from pensacola if these are the types of things you like to see on radius rides leave a comment in the comment section if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out hit that subscribe button i promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more if you are a subscriber Thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content here on Radies Rides, click the link in that description. Get yourself some Radies Rides merch. It will go a long way. And like I said, we really appreciate it. Speaking of appreciation, my wonderful wife, Lori, working hard with that camera. She's been actually doing extra yoga, extra to get this car ready for you today because I'm telling you, the heat is beaming. So thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And I know all the subscribers love you. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.